awesome. Well, we've been traveling through different this summer, and, and we've been looking at spiritual gifts. Well, actually, we're starting with our first uh, batch of spiritual gifts, the love gifts this morning, but also spiritual disciplines as a way to, to really offer ourselves to the Lord. And so every, every Sunday for the last couple of weeks, we've been looking at a different spiritual discipline. And this morning, we are looking at serving. And what better example to look at than, than Christ as our example um, of what it looks like to serve. So we're going to turn to the word here. I'll encourage you to just read along with the scriptures. Um, read in your heart. So John 13. During supper, when the devil had already put it in his heart, in the heart of Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, to betray him, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things to his hands, and that he had come from God and was going back to God, rose from supper. He laid aside his outer garments, and taking a towel, tied it around his waist. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them down with the towel that was wrapped around him. We'll move forward a couple verses. When he had washed their feet and put on his outer garments and resumed his place, he said to them, do you understand what it is that I have done for you? You call me teacher and Lord, and you are right, for I am so. If I then, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have given you an example that you should also do as I have done to you. Christ is our ultimate example for what it is to serve one another. He, you know, it, it, it became most evident when he laid down his life and his sacrificial act on the cross. And, and we too want to lay our lives down for, for our brothers and for our sisters through sacrificial servanthood and, and agape love, that sacrificial love. Um, but here, this is just a powerful picture of what it looks like to, to, to serve one another. It was quite customary in this, this time period to have a wash basin and a pitcher and a towel in the entrance of your home so that when people came to, to your home, they could have their feet washed. You know, they're wearing sandals, they're walking around, they didn't have cars and Ubers the way we do. And so their feet would get so dirty and hot just from their daily just from their daily journey. So it was customary on entrance to a home that they, their feet would be washed. It would be more comfortable, it would be refreshing, but it was also a sign of, of hospitality, of, of, of serving. But the ones that would often do the washing were the servants, not just any servant, but the, the lowliest of servants, the lowest servant. And so here we see Christ, the Messiah, our King of Kings, kneeling down, taking off his outer garments and washing the defeat of his disciples. He literally put his hands and touched the dirtiest parts of them, which were covered in dirt and muck from the day's travel, and in touching them made them clean. What a picture, hey? And so when we look at this example, what does it look like for us to, to get down and humble ourselves to, to serve, to meet the needs of those around us? And I just want to highlight one thing. Judas was there. He was one of the disciples um, whose feet he touched. This man had already betrayed Jesus in his heart. So when we think of serving others, are we just serving those um, that we can, you know, say we're buds, say we're friends, we're on good terms? Are we see, are serving the ones that are hostile towards us, that are angry, that have a, a vendetta towards us? That's like counter-cultural, that's, that's radical servanthood. And so I'm going to be a little bossy here for a second, so bear with me. What I'm going to ask you to do, whether you're, you're home or in the room, is to get out your phone, I know you've got one on you, and take a picture of the slide behind me. And through this next song, we are going to just reference this slide, but particularly the little prompt there, the question on the bottom. And this is what I want us to, to reflect on for this next song. Um, I want us to ask ourselves, and if you have a notes app on your phone or if you have a journal with you, to just write down. Try to think. Just meditate for a minute. Let Holy Spirit show you and reveal to you what ways Jesus served others and what ways he served his Father. And do we have those fruit in our lives? 
we will never have all of them. <laughs> Thankfully, he, he filled the gap for us. But by his Holy Spirit, there is a, a growing in us of this Christ-likeness. And so it's not so, so far off. You know, you see people um, and they have, you know, they have the gift of serving. It's like, okay, we're called to that too, though. They have an anointing and a power that the Holy Spirit has, has given them. But we too are called um, to, to work that out to serve one another. So this morning, I just want us to reflect during this next song and to identify the ways that Christ has served others, the way he served you, the way he served his father, and to just think and have a conversation with Holy Spirit. Just quiet to yourself and ask, um, are those fruit evident in your life and your lives? So this next song is, is called Available, and I love it just because it, it helps to posture our hearts. Are we available to say, God, use me. Use me to serve those around me. Identify the needs around me, Lord. Just show, show them to me, Holy Spirit, and help me, Holy Spirit, to be a part of meeting that need through the love of Christ that you've put in me. So let's worship together in this next song. Thanks.
God, we thank you for your presence. We thank you that you're here in this room. We thank you that though we can't vocally express our love to you and worship, we thank you just for the opportunity to listen and just be sensitive to your spirit. How wonderful it is to know that you are singing over us right now. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And God, we look after your example of what it looks like to serve others. Serve others out of love. Serve others out of sacrifice. Lord, show us every day. Continue to reveal to us, Lord, what it looks like to model your example. We want to be available to you, Lord. We want to be available to you, Lord. Be with us this day in the service. Bless each one, whether they're sitting here or they're tuning in online or they're watching the service later, Lord. Speak to each one. Thank you for them. Thank you that they are a precious child of God. We love you, Lord. Amen. Amen. You can be seated. Awesome. Well, we want to say welcome. Welcome here. We are so glad to uh, just be with you this morning. And uh, my name is Soraya. If, if we haven't met, hello. I am the communications pastor here. And yeah, I'd, I'd, love to, I'd love to just meet you. If I haven't met you yet, come say hi sometime. I can't shake your hand, but I'll you know, give you an elbow from across the room or something. <laughs> Well, we are, we are glad you're here, and whether you're um, new in person here or you're tuning in online and one, this is one of your first times, we just want to say uh, thank you and we want to get to know you. So um, if you have anything like a prayer request or even something to celebrate, we want to know, we want to um, just come alongside you and celebrate with you. So we have a Connect card. You can fill it out at Connect. Connect? Connect.lifecenter.org. No, that's not right. Life's, is, that, is that right? Okay, goodness me. Connect.lifecenter.org. You can go there and fill out a Connect card, and we'd love to hear from you. As well, we just want to take a moment to say thank you for your continued generous giving in this time. Um, and we just want to take a moment to just point out the different ways that offering is available online. So you can find out the different options for for offering at lifecenter.org slash give. And again, we just want to say thank you for um, just continuing to give up your first fruits to the Lord. Um, we are grateful. He is grateful. And um, as well, if... if you would like prayer at any time um, during the service or, or today, you can call our, our church and or you can email at hello.lifecenter.org. Hello at lifecenter.org. Goodness me, all these like domains and at symbols. My word. Um, but you can do that and we will get back to you and we would love to pray with you today. As well, we just have a couple announcements. We have an exciting one. We are doing live, um, live Zoom Alpha for the first time. So we are doing Alpha on Zoom. It's the first time Life Center is doing Zoom, and we couldn't be more excited. So what we want you to do is if you have a friend that you feel would benefit from Alpha, this would be a great opportunity for you to invite them and then attend. So all Alpha is, it's a relational small group where they explore questions about faith and life, and it's a really relational setting. It's 11 weeks, so it's a great opportunity to get connected in a small group setting and then really just dive into the word and each other. Um, so it's, it's awesome. So we encourage you to do that. That is starting on Thursday, July 23rd, and it's from 7 to 9 p.m. So you can sign up online at lifecenter.org slash groups. There's a big old banner there. You can't miss it. We'd love for you to sign up. And then another thing, also on Zoom, we just, we're all getting so good at Zoom these days. I'm so proud of all of us. <laughs> but we have a Zoom all church corporate prayer meeting coming up. We like to do these the last Sunday of every month just to unite as a church um, and just to pray into all that God has for Life Center. So we are going to be doing that on July. Sunday, July 26, from 7 to 8.30 p.m., you sign up into the corporate prayer uh, small group at lifecenter.org slash groups, and we'll send out the Zoom link to you an hour before the meeting, and uh, then you'll get going from there. So we'd love to join you, uh, or we'd love for you to join us um, as we pray together as a church. 
so that's exciting. But without further ado, we are going to dive in um, into the love gifts. We have the lovely Pastor Lori and Pastor Rhonda this morning. So why don't you give them a warm welcome this morning? Thank you, Soraya. All right. Take my mask off and wipe the sweat. You know what we do every time we have to take the, our masks off. Well, good morning, everybody. How are you all doing? Are you okay? You ready? You ready to dive in? I know Pastor Rhonda and I are super excited. We are. And, and don't be concerned if you're joining us online or here live and in the room. Pastor Rhonda and I are in the same bubble. So once we extend it to 10, uh, we are in the same bubble. So we may be about four feet apart here, but we actually are included in each other's bubble of 10. So we've been exposed to each other. And so we <laughs> felt like this was a safe way for us to be able to co-teach together. But we are so excited at the privilege of just bringing our first part of actually diving into some specific gifts this morning with you. And truly, we believe with all of our heart that this is going, this summer, all of it, not just today, but this summer is going to be a spiritual awakening season for every single one of us as we dive into all that God has for us in spiritual gifts. And so what I want you to know is that whether you are watching online right now, whether you are sitting in this room right now, I want you to just take a look at the people around you. I actually want you to look around at the people around you. Every single one of you is a part of the body of Christ, has a gift that you are bringing to the body of Christ, and we have need of you. And I want you to know that, yes. and I want you to know that about each other. I want us to see each other through that lens. It matters, and it's really important. And as Pastor Jason's been sharing with us, we are using a couple of resources of course, the scriptures are the first place that we're going, along with Unlocking Your Giftedness by Robert J. Clinton. And so if you want to pick that up, it's like a textbook. It is a theology textbook, but it is phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. And also some um, of John Thompson's Convergence. And so Pastor Rhonda and I actually, on top of that, have been unpacking these conversations about spiritual gifts on our podcast as well. We have a podcast. It's called... The Awakening Moments podcast, and it's on Spotify, and it's on iTunes. But we just want to invite you, if you want to continue sort of unpacking this and processing this for your own life, we encourage you to have a listen sometime through the week. We're going to be talking about this further and diving in further on these topics in our podcast. Again, we only have such a short time with you on Sunday, and so we've been in having some incredible, incredible. life-changing mm -hmm. conversations there. So we want to invite you there. Now... Before we dive in today, I do want to kind of put a little bit of a disclaimer out there. Some of the things that we've been taught about spiritual gifts, I would say have been somewhat limited. I mean, there's this idea out there that, you know, you take a spiritual gifts te test, you know, you come up with your top three, you know, you kind of operate. I mean, if you end up with like four or five or six that are, you know, equally scored, you're like, wow, I must be extremely gifted. This is awesome. And so we've sort of thought of the gifts as like we can pick and choose them, step into them, you know, and operate in them in as much as possible. What I actually want you to do is I kind of want you to throw away everything you've learned about spiritual gifts up until now, or maybe don't throw it away. Maybe just put it on pause and open your heart and your mind to actually think about it a little bit differently. And I want you to think about, and I want you to open your heart to God revealing to you a primary gift, a primary gift that he has given you probably at the moment of salvation, the moment that literally God called you into his kingdom, he empowered a gift in your life, a primary gift. And you may operate in more than one spiritual gift. You may be a leader and have other gifts, but there's this primary sort of outflow of how this gift manifests in your life. And, and Robert Clinton explains it as a primary focal element within your giftedness set, okay? So I want you to sort of throw away, you know, all the gift tests you've taken, and I want you just to open your heart to the Holy Spirit for him to unpack to you a primary gift that he has given to you and reveal that to you and how that primary gift actually unfolds through all of your spiritual gifts. And Rhonda and I, again, on the podcast, we really unpack this. We're not going to talk much about this today, but I just want to give you one illustration of sort of how this works. You know how Paul taught us and said 
that we are one body with many members. And so if we think of our physical body, we are one body and we have many parts to our body. And that's exactly what it's like in the body of Christ. And so each one of you are a part of one body. We're one body together. So if I'm the hand, then that means that I can never be the foot. Like I, I can never, so the hand is my primary gift. I'm one part of the body and I can never be the foot. And if I try to be the foot, it's going to be absolutely exhausting. It, it's not going to work well at all. If I flip upside down and walk on my hands, it's not going to work at all. And I'm going to be completely exhausted. But if I function in my primary gift as the hand, and I allow you to function in your primary gift as the foot, and we work in tandem together, then the fullness of the expression of what Jesus wants to do and how he wants to build his kingdom can unfold on the earth. That's all I'm going to talk about that today. So you, I just want you to process that as we're going through the gifts. So today we're going to be unpacking the love gifts. There are word gifts, power gifts, and love gifts. Today we're going to be talking about the love gifts. And the love gifts are absolutely essential to the body of Christ. In fact, I almost think of them like the heartbeat of the body of Christ. Without the heart, the body cannot thrive. And the heart literally pumps blood to every part of the body. That is how essential love gifts are. But love gifts are often underneath the surface. And so there's two challenges that we see, sorry, a challenge and a promise that we see in the love gifts. The challenge is the love gifts are often unseen, just like the unseen parts of the body, our heart, our lungs, these essential parts that we cannot function without. They're often unseen, but the scriptures promise extra blessing, a special honor for those who operate in the love gifts. Why? Because the love gifts are the heart of God. And so Pastor Rhonda, why don't you start unpacking for us? I love that. That is so powerful, the heart of God. And as believers, we are called to use these gifts for the purpose of equipping the church. It is for a kingdom purpose. And one day, each and every one of us are going to stand before the Lord. And we're going to have to give an account of how we use the gifts that God entrusted to us because they are God's. They're not ours. These are gifts that God has entrusted for us to steward. And Jesus delivers a powerful teaching on the stewardships of our gifts and is found in Matthew 25, 14 to 30, when he talks about the talents. And it's about him giving his property and entrusting to his servants his property. And so this is a stewardship story and parable. And with stewardship, with our gifts, this includes knowing what gifts we have. So as Lori was talking about through this summer, we're going to be unpacking all the spiritual gifts. Write down what gifts really resonate with you that just your heart comes alive when you hear them spoken about. And just a little footnote, some of, sometimes, most of the times our spiritual gifts feel so natural, we don't realize they're a spiritual gift. We sometimes feel like they're going to have this feeling every time we walk in our spiritual gift. It is actually a natural, supernatural empowerment that the Holy Spirit gives us. But we think everyone does this. Everyone thinks like this. They don't. Everyone may have to practice in a discipline, but for you, it just comes natural. So write them down and go to Holy Spirit and ask. We receive our, our confidence from Holy Spirit, but then ask someone around you. We get our confirmation from those around us. So as you're writing them down, you may be on your first time discovering this. Write them on a piece of paper or what kind of stands out. Ask Holy Spirit to just give you that confidence that this is a gift he's given you as you focus on a primary, and then get confirmation from someone you trust around you. So that's just a little note for you as you're discovering. So first off, know what gifts we have. That's very important. Understand what the gifts are for, and as we've said, is for kingdom purpose. This is for building the kingdom of God and edifying and equipping the church. Use your gifts. This is really important. We cannot develop our gifts if we don't use them. It's so important for us to say yes. And as we use our spiritual gifts, we begin to bear fruit as a body of Christ for the kingdom of God to make an impact. The biblical principle is true. If we're faithful with a little, we can be faithful with much. And I love, and that's paraphrased from Luke 16, 10. The heart of learning and growing in our spiritual gifts is to develop a servant's heart. Everything comes from serving God, from ministering to God through our spiritual gifts. And I love this phrase, as we focus on faithful responses, we can know that God will entrust us with more. So with, our, with our, the gifts that God has entrusted to us, focus 
on faithful responses. And what does that mean? Say yes. Be all in. And trust God to give the opportunity and to expand more as he determines and as he enables. But stay focused on faithful responses and watch what God will do. As Lori has has said, everyone at least has one gift. Some of you may have more, and that's determined by God. But everyone has a primary gift. And so we're just going to unpack this. And I just want to take one more moment to say, if you don't have the spiritual gifts of love gifts that we're talking about today, if it's not a spiritual gift for you, you are not off the hook. You're not off the hook. That means it's a spiritual discipline that you practice intentionally. And that is part of becoming more like Jesus and more like him. So if it's not a spiritual gift, then it is a spiritual discipline and practice you intentionally walk in. So for example, if you don't have the spiritual gift of helps, doesn't mean you don't help. You say, sorry, I don't have that gift. Um, I'm not helping. No. We practice the heart of a servant, and we dive right in, and we intentionally walk in that. It's so so funny because I don't know who selected you and I to (laughs) preach on the love gifts because actually, Pastor Ron and myself, we we don't have any of them as a primary spiritual gift. (laughs) It's true. None of them. (laughs) So we practice these gifts out of pure discipline. Absolutely. So we're going to dive into the first one, and it's called administration. And so... Where this is part of the love gifts, and actually I should go back. The definition of the love gifts is to manifest the love of God in very practical ways. God's love is tangibly experienced when these gifts are used. So this is the cluster of love groups. And in that cluster is administration, it's helps, and we're going to talk about mercy and giving. So I'm going to dive into administration. And we can see where this is found in 1 Corinthians 12, verse 28. And it says, And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administration, and various kinds of tongues. So here we see administration. Now the spiritual gift of administration can often be also called in the scripture guidance. And this involves the capacity to manage details so to support and to free other leader, leaders to prioritize their efforts. Your lane is not the how, is the how, sorry, not the what, where, or why. So you are there to support and to free other leaders to walk in their mission and vision. So your lane is the how. They are supportive gifts, and when exercised, they help the church run smoothly. So Acts 6, 1 to 4 is a great example of this gift in operation. So if you feel you might have the gift of administration, write that down. Acts 6, 1 to 4. If you have the gift of administration, this often happens to you. You have a knack for organizing things. You like to standardize methods for doing things. You think in terms of helping people reach their goals. You, don't, you love doing things that help others, and you don't mind managing things or executing the details involved in a plan that has been made by another, and the plan has been usually made by a leader that you walk beside. So if you have the gift of administration, you find yourself often being chosen to oversee with the leaders or an organization, direct details to execute for structural organization. And you may start with this gift thinking of the gift of helps because there's such a a desire to help and to support, but you inevitably keep finding yourself working side by side leaders or an organization to directly execute organizational structure. That's really important. And I want to just, we just thought we'd bring some people to mind. We just mentioned some people as we're talking about these gifts that operate in our church family here at Life Center. I have the privilege of working closely with Luke Gervin. When I became the assistant pastor at Life Center, he was a captain of the usher team and was part of my leadership team. And as we would meet as leaders, we would just be discussing how can we make this more efficient, more just have just more passion in what we do and help her with training and all those types of things that leaders talk about in their meeting. Luke kept putting his hand up and saying, I have an idea. I know how we can do this more efficiency, with efficiently. PCO, planning center, I think we should get all the volunteers on there. And he started to talk about the structural organization of executing plans and schedules and templates. And my mind was like, what? 
this is like, well, not me. This is not me. Oh my goodness. But Luke stepped right in and very quickly he became one of, I want to say my right hand. And he has overseen behind the scenes, planning center, all the structural details, all the ministerial operations that I do with guest services. He directly works with me. So when we were talking about this today, he was like, you know, I thought it was the gift of helps. I did not realize that this was a specific gift. So the gift of administration usually comes when you feel you have the gift of helps, but you end up moving into a different place in a very supportive role beside a leader. So that makes sense? Amazing. And I just love that. So now we're going to dive into the gift of helps. Those with the gift of helps simply aid others with the strength that God supplies in practical ways. Whenever there are groups of people, there's always practical needs. And the gift of helps refers to the capacity to unselfishly meet the needs of others through very practical means. And the gift of helps is an extraordinary love gift and it frees up others to exercise their spiritual gifts and it demonstrates practically the love of God in very tangible ways you have the gift of helps if this often often happens to you you have a strong desire to help others an ability to see ways to be helpful an unselfish nature that can do tasks whenever they arrive menial or not you bend towards practical service. You do little jobs and don't worry about credit. You take joy that your gift releases others to operate in their gifts. You enjoy providing warm and inviting spaces for others, and it usually revolves around food. That could be called, you've heard, hospitality. That is one of those words that comes under the helps gift. You also enjoy working with your hands, assisting in practical hands-on projects, which you may have heard as referred to as craftsmanship. If you have any of those definitions operating in your life, you have the spiritual gift of helps. You enable the body to function more efficiently and to free up others to exercise your spiritual gifts by doing things that, if undone, might hinder the body of Christ. You truly reflect the love, servant's heart, and humility of Christ. And I want to talk about a leader that we have here, one of our volunteers, and that's Kathy Roth. And Kathy has been serving at Life Center for over 30 years. Now, I've seen Kathy with a broom in her hand. I've seen her mopping floors, cleaning bathrooms, checking children into life kids, holding crying babies, running down the hallway to grab whatever is needed. This is Kathy. Anything that needs to be done, she's all in. And I think of all the volunteers that have said to me, Rhonda, whatever you need, I'll clean toilets, I'll wash that, I don't care. I just want to be here and I want to help, whatever you need. If there is an overriding need to help, a desire to help, because you can't help yourself but help, you have the spiritual gift of helps. And literally, I want to reach through this plexiglass and hug each of you so tightly. Life Center cannot operate cannot operate on a day, on a weekly basis without the spiritual gifts of helps. I look around this building at so many renovations and so many things have been done through the spiritual gift of helps. So it is beautiful, beautiful. So we just want to celebrate each of you and thank you for inspiring us to love more like Christ. So I'll give this to you now, Lord, to unpack mercy and giving. So good. All right, let's all take a deep breath. I know this is a lot of information. <laughs> and Pastor Ron and I are just overflowing. We're just overflowing. Now, in this, I want to reiterate uh, just something that she touched on, that it is so, so important for us to understand that it can even be hard to identify these as spiritual gifts because for some of you, you operate literally so naturally in these gifts and you, you can't understand why everybody doesn't think this way. And the truth is everybody doesn't think this way. And that's part of why it's hard to identify it as a spiritual gift. Sometimes we think we have to work at it and strive at it. And, and often if we are, that's because that's not the gift that the Holy Spirit has given us. Again, the other tension that we have to manage is that sometimes we don't want the gift that we've been given. <laughs> sometimes we're like, I don't want that gift. Like, I'm the heart, I know, but I want to be on the outside of the body, and I want, to, I want people to see what I'm doing, and I want to, you know, exercise some of these other gifts. Well, the heart can't live on the outside of the body, and if you have one of these gifts, you must fully embrace it and step into it with all of your heart, and guess what? God will open up opportunities in other gifts through the lens of this primary gift, and that is a profound thing that happens as your giftedness set is starting to be expressed through 
through Christ. So anyways, it's so good. This is so, so, so exciting. So mercy, all right? The gift of mercy. Now, all of us as followers of Jesus are called to walk as tender-hearted and compassionate with others. We see this modeled by Jesus constantly and continually. And for some of us, we need to operate it in it as a discipline. And for others of you, you have a spiritual gift of mercy. Some have literally, the, and people who do, they have this capacity to have empathy and sympathy for those in need, and especially those who are marginalized and suffering. And they manifest that empathy in very, very practical ways, wanting to come alongside them, wanting to help them, wanting to encourage them, wanting to pray for them, any way they can come alongside and help them move forward. The gift of mercy is in action in that place. And so, like most people who don't have the gift of mercy, if they see a train wreck, they're like running in the other direction. But you with the gift of mercy, you see the train wreck, and I, I mean, I don't mean I don't mean any disrespect as I say that but you know our lives can be messy and broken sometimes and the people with the gift of mercy are drawn to that they they can't help but lean into that they're they're compelled to lean into those spaces with people and a person with the gift of mercy may find that people often come to them and tell them about their pain, and you're just drawn to be with them and to help them and love them and pray for them and be with them in there. And I want to talk about someone uh, in our congregation that has a powerful gift of mercy, and some of you may or may not know him. His name is Rick Green or Richard Green. And Rick is so easily given over to tears when true vulnerability is shared or shown. I've been in small groups with Rick. I've been in conversations with Rick. I've been in ministry environments with Rick. He's drawn to people who need help. And he's often thinking and dreaming of ways that he can help people experience the love of God and the healing of God. He even gets burdened and frustrated when he feels like he's not doing enough to help those in need. And, and he's never looking for attention or reward. In fact, I think he would actually, well, I, get, I had permission to share, but he didn't want me to share his name because people with this gift, they, they're not looking for any, any recognition. This, they're just so compelled to do this. And, and sometimes people with the gift of mercy think everybody else should be as merciful as them. They can't see why everybody doesn't feel as compelled as them. But people with this gift, it is supernaturally empowered. And it is because God has anointed them to step into these places. Every single time I talk to Rick, every time, whether it's a conversation in the foyer, whether we're talking about, you know, ministering to people, whatever it is, he is always talking about how we as the church need to get better at meeting the needs of the church. This just flows out of him effortlessly. And so Rick, um, as we were talking back and forth about this, he wrote this about himself, a small testimony, and I think it illustrates so beautifully how God has used his life. And often people with the gift of mercy were not merciful before Christ. And that is another sign that you may have this gift. And so Rick says, before I said yes to Jesus, I was on an island. I was alone inside my skin. I let no emotion escape and I really didn't give a rat's about much. I got excited about nothing, depressed about nothing, because there was nothing there that I could find. I remember making a choice early in life that I would be the strong, silent type and I was great at it. Sure, there were times I helped people, but, and even sacrificially, but I did it for the applause of men. And then I encountered a love of a different kind, and I melted into his arms. And God, in that moment, empowered Rick with a supernatural, God-given gift of mercy to love and care for the body of Christ for an audience of one. And so in the scriptures in Acts, we actually see a story about a girl named Tabitha, and it says that she was full of good works and acts of charity. This is the gift of mercy. And in the story, she dies, and the apostles come and pray for her, and she's raised to life. God had more for her to do. And, the, and, and in verse 39, it says, And the widows came beside him weeping and showing the tunics and other 
garments that Dorcas made while she was with them, showing all of these ways that she was showing mercy to those in need. And so if you have the gift of mercy, here are some clues that you may have this gift. Tears come easily as you hear and, and see things that sadden you. Most people see you as highly empathetic. You want to reach out and help those who are hurting. People in need like to have you around because you bring comfort. You have an unusual desire to express love to helpless people. When confronted by hurting people, your first thought is, how can I help them? You desire to practically express the love of God to people in need. You desire to help alleviate problems of social concern as a part of the church's responsibility to society. And a slight difference between the gift of helps and the gift of mercy is how it's executed. So again, there can be a real practical way that this, this gift is expressed, but it's always with a person directly. And so that's how you know that it's mercy that's firing off. All right, last, the last one we're going to unpack today, we could probably do a full message on every single one of these gifts, but we hope that you're hearing something that resonates either with you or with someone that you know, because people, I, people are probably coming to mind as we talk about this. You're like, oh my goodness, that person, my sister has that for sure. You can see people in your mind as we're describing these things. So the gift of giving. Now, this one's a little bit, it seems a little different and may, might be like a bit surprising of why this comes under the same category as administration and helps and mercy. And Paul urges those with the gift of giving to give generously. And what this means is to give without an ulterior motive. And so giving is one of those gifts. It's very practical. It is financial. It can be your time and, and your, your possessions and things like that as well, but it's often financial. And this is one of those gifts that you kind of know right away if you have this gift. Because when an opportunity kind of comes up for, for maybe there's a need and there's a financial way that, that, that people are asking for you to sow, you know if you're like, oh, how can I help? Yes, I'm in. I'm going to give as much as I have. Or if you're like, oh no, no, they're asking for money again. Oh my goodness. And you're, you know, your fists are closed around this. Now, for those who would say, I, I definitely don't have this gift. I know I don't have this gift. Like Pastor Rhonda said, we are not off the hook here. This is a gift like all the gifts that we are called to operate in out of a spiritual discipline. But those with the gift of giving, are compelled to give over and above the tithe. And so every single one of us are called out of discipline to give our tithe. It's part of our obedience and our sacrificial way that we give back to God all that he has given to us because everything we have belongs to him. But those with the spiritual gift of giving give over and above. So the gift of giving refers to the unusual capacity to give generously, over and above to meet the needs of others and to do so with a purity of motive which senses that the giving is a simple sharing of what God has already given to them. It's not for a tax receipt. It's not so that a building can be named over them or to look good or for some extra sense of status. It's not about any of that. And the gift of giving is not for rich people either. Sometimes we think, well, I, I don't have a lot. I want you to think about it more like the bo little boy with five loaves and two fish. That was a gift of giving, that whatever it is that you have, that you want it to flow through your hands. And so those with the gift of giving, they don't say, they don't, they're not worried about how much they have, they're worried about how much they can give, how much can flow through them. And so that's a really, really beautiful thing. In the scriptures, in Acts again, we see a really cool story about the Apostle Barnabas. He's also called the son of encouragement. And he had a field, he sold it, and he brought the money and he laid it at the Apostle's feet. And that's a powerful, powerful act and very, very generous act of the gift of giving. And one thing I want to point out about this story and this reference in Acts chapter 4 is that this was done publicly. Now, we don't really like that here in Canada. We're not really comfortable with public acts of generosity because, again, we think about Jesus who called out the Pharisees for giving as a show for their own selfish gain. But there is a place 
in church and in celebration of the spiritual gift of giving that actually spurs us and spurs faith within us to believe God for amazing, amazing things. And so that's just something that I think all of us can work at because I know I'm a little bit uncomfortable with that because I don't know how that actually works without getting, you know, letting pride come in. But there is a place where we need to spur each other on and where ge- like generous gifts of giving that are firing off are celebrated and that we don't have to be ashamed of that or feel like that's something that we have to keep in secret. So there is someone in our congregation who has a gift of giving. Her name is Ruth Cullen. I'm sure there are many of you that have the spiritual gift of giving. But Ruth Cullen, I asked her if I could share a little bit of her story. Because again, for years and years and years, I've been doing small groups with her. I've seen her in many different ministry capacities. And this woman, every single time I'm with her, I I just, I look with my jaw open because any opportunity that presents itself that the Holy Spirit speaks to her and says, I want you to give, she's always ready to give. It's like she lives every single day looking for an opportunity to give to someone in need, to help in some way as the Holy Spirit directs her. And it's almost like she's listening constantly and continually listening for these ways that she can do that. And so Ruth said that her gift showed up as she started to be obedient to walk in what the Lord had called her to do. And as she started to do that, all of a sudden she began to be entrusted with more. And Ruth describes it like this, and I think in her own words, she did it so brilliantly. And she says this, I was a believer for a long time, and a worry of money was an area the enemy had a hook. Interesting. Interesting that God could awaken a spiritual gift of giving in someone's life who actually worries about money, who actually in the natural has a worry about money. That is so fascinating to me. She says, then I remember clearly on a Friday night fellowship meeting, something flipped and I decided, okay, enough of this financial turmoil. I am going to do it God's way. From that day on, I started tithing faithfully of my income. I was recently retired from the public service. This was in 1998. So now she's going down to less income, but she's deciding, I am going to faithfully tithe. She's living on a reduced income, and then she began a second career as a human resources consultant. She says, the more I gave over and above the tithe, the bigger the contracts I was awarded became. It was so easily identifiable. 22 years later, I'm still experiencing the provision of the Lord. He is 100% trustworthy. He will give you what you need. Note, this is different from what you want. And there is a joy in giving. There is a delight in seeing how the Lord will guide you to see an area of need and how you can so unobtrusively just drop a helping giving hand into the situation and never stick around to be thanked. You only want the Lord to see your heart and to help the people he has shown you to help and to build the church. Wow. That could not be better written except by a person with a supernatural gift of giving. And so if you are a person who has the gift of giving, these are some of the things that happen to you. You have a sensitivity to recognize the needs of others. A quickness to assume some burdens for meeting the needs of others. A joy in finding out a need and being able to meet it financially. A relative freedom from a self-serving attitude. A capacity that provides the means to give others, to give to others. The ability to amass financial resources. So that's interesting. There's a stewardship piece there that kind of comes along the gift of giving. A carefulness in handling finances. A conviction that all of what you have belongs to the Lord and you're a steward. You take delight and look for ways for God to flow things through you. You don't look for any rewards or praise for what you're doing. In fact, the more secretive you can be, the better. And you have an ability to hear and sense the Lord's leading in where you are to give and to meet a need supernaturally. And you're sad when you can't give even more away. If you have some of these feelings, if you have some of these symptoms, you may have a supernatural spiritual gift of giving from the Holy Spirit. And again, every single one of us are called to step into these spiritual gifts out of discipline or out of empowerment from the Holy Spirit. 
So powerful. So in summary, we're just going to recap. That's, these are all amazing, aren't they? Oh, my heart. Like we said, we just could keep going here. Wish we had more time with you. We just love this. But in summary, the gift of, admin, I'm just going to go through the four. The gift of administration bends towards serving leaders. The spiritual gift of helps bends towards helping and releasing others to function in their spiritual gifts. The spiritual gift of mercy bends towards healing the broken who are right in front of them. And the spiritual gift of giving bends towards practically supplying the resources to further the kingdom of God. And I know as Lori and I were preparing this message, we were overcome with the beauty that each of you have that operate in the spiritual gifts of love. In any of these four gifts, we want to say we were overcome with the beauty of that. And we're inspired to continually walk intentionally in the spiritual discipline of these gifts in our lives to become more Christ-like with greater humility and a greater heart to serve. And you demonstrate to that to us in such a beautiful way. And we want to say thank you. We want to say thank you for those of you that have these spiritual gifts, that you are stepping in, that you are giving from this place of love to demonstrate so practically the love of God in ways that many of us will never see. It's behind the scenes, but I love that God says what he sees in secret, he will reward. And that is a beautiful thing. It's God we want to see and to see these things in our hearts. And so we just want to acknowledge how grateful we are for you. And may we continue as we walk through this series, not compare ourselves and not diminish the gifts that God has has given us because I need you and you need me because we are the body of Christ. It's about one body, the body of Christ, to lift high him, to honor him, and to bring glory for the name of Jesus Christ. So as a body, let's be our hand, let's be the foot, let's be the heart, let's be all that God has called us to be all in so we can work together and see God's purposes fulfilled in this time. Amen. You don't have to say amen. You can give a wave online or you can give a clap. Let me just see you guys giving clap. Yes. Amen. But I love, we're going to end with a scripture here and we're going to take a moment to pray over each of you that have these gifts operating in your life. Or if you're asking God for an impartation of this gift, because it, God does say that we can ask for gifts as well. He determines what we receive, but we can ask, we can ask. And he loves when we come and we ask, but we're going to take a moment to pray. But before I do, When we summarize the love gifts, 1 Corinthians 13, 13 says this beautiful. Now these three remain, faith, hope, and love. But the greatest of these is love. Wow. I may be a little in my heart with the love gifts, be like, wow, it's pretty spectacular. The greatest of these is love. And so we just honor each of you with the love gifts. So today, if you're watching online, we'd love for you, wherever you are, to join us in this act of just surrender with God. If you feel today that you have the spiritual gift of administration, helps, mercy, or giving, or it's a gift today that you really feel prompted in your heart to ask God for one of those gifts or all of them, we would love for you to stand right now. And we want to pray over you a fresh impartation and a fresh release. And this is probably one that maybe some of you feel uncomfortable even standing because you are a behind the scenes kind of person. But we would love you right now to stand in this room, and we want to pray over you. So if any of these minister to you, or you feel like that's me, please stand. Yeah, yeah. If you Join have us. this gift, if you believe you have a gift, any of these four yeah. that we unpacked today, or if you want any of these four, and online too, we actually want you to stand. Stand at home, wherever mm-hmm. you are. Just stand up in a posture of receiving. We just want to pray an impartation prayer um, over you, and just believing for a fresh release of these giftings. Look at this. I, I knew it. I knew it because the lo- I, the love gifts is the heart of the ch- it's the heart. the heart of the body. Like yeah. this is so. I love this. I this know we're beautiful. overcome with the beauty. This Look at this. I know. I can't imagine online. We're just imagining what beautiful. it looks like at home for each of you. So let's pray. Put your hands out in a posture of receiving a gift because this really is a gift from God given to you by Him for Him. Mm-hmm empowered by the Holy Spirit. So Father, we thank you that you have equipped the church with all that we need for the purpose of the gospel of Jesus Christ going forward, God, for your kingdom purpose. And so right now, Father, every single person in this room and walking, watching online, 
we speak a fresh impartation and a fresh release of the spiritual gifts, God, of administration, the spiritual gifts of helps, the spiritual gift of mercy, the spiritual gift of giving. Father, we pray a fresh release and impartation into these gifts. And we thank you that you have determined the measure and the capacity. But God, I thank you that as each of us step into these gifts that have acknowledged this is their heart, this is the heartbeat of their heart and it's your heartbeat, that God, they would see the significance that they hold in the body of Christ, how desperately needed they are. And may they not be robbed by feeling disqualified or underappreciated or feeling not as significant, but may they see that they literally hold the heart of God in the demonstration of love that they infuse into the body of Christ and into this broken world. So we thank you, Father, for the fresh release of your power and your Holy Spirit. In the name of Jesus, we receive that as a gift from you, a supernatural gift from you that comes from you, right from your heart into each person standing's heart, God. We thank you in the name of Jesus. And Father, we just pray for the tensions within operating in our gifts, God, that number one, we would release. Mm -hmm. If this is a gift we have, but we don't want it, (laughs) God, God, we just ask that you would do the work in our hearts to receive that which you've given us, to be thankful and to operate in it in it effectively. Yes, God. God, we repent for the ways mm-hmm. that as we've operated in these gifts that we've actually been frustrated because other people don't see how important these are. Father, we repent for the ways that we've imposed our gifts and our sort of natural ways that you have placed in us on others and been angry or frustrated about why more mm-hmm. people aren't using those gifts. God, we lay that before you. Mm-hmm. We lay those frustrations before you, God, and we ask you to bring a true contentment in exactly the measure that you have given us. And Father, that we would step out in in faithfulness, just like the parable of the talents, that we would be faithful stewards of what you have entrusted, knowing that these gifts come from you. They're not ours. They don't belong to us. They're yours, and you call us to steward them. God, help us to steward them well. And Father, we thank you for a fresh release of these giftings in the body of Christ. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. 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 Well, you may be seated. You may be seated. This is exciting. This is such exciting exciting. stuff. We're going to invite Soraya to come up and just close off our service today. But thank you so much. I hope you guys aren't like, oh my gosh, (laughs) that was a lot. But we are so excited about this and just believing for incredible supernatural things. Amen.